and turn your King James Bible to the book of Jeremiah chapter 23. Book of Jeremiah chapter 23. We'll talk to you today about false positivity. We're in a very special place right now. This is called Bible Point. Um, place where Theodore Roosevelt used to actually come out here as a young man. He was staying with a guy named William Sewell in the town of Island Falls, up that way. And uh, he used to come out here and uh, read the Bible at this very spot right here. Great place to do it. It's Mattawamkeag River right there behind me, as you can see through the trees. And um, really neat place to, to preach a sermon. And I preached a much bigger study, which will be coming out Sunday morning. This one will come out before it. But I want to talk today about the issue of false positivity. You'll see what I mean here as we continue. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 16 through 32. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. <laughs> they speak a vision of their own heart and not of the, out of the mouth of the Lord. The modern day prophets would be very kind of like the news media people, I would say. That's what most people look to for the future. Uh, what's the latest? Where's this country going? How's the economy doing? They're listening to the false prophets on television. They say still unto them that despise me, the Lord hath said, ye shall have peace. And they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. <laughs> exactly what the news media does. For who hath stood in the counsel of the Lord and hath perceived and heard his word? Who hath marked his word and heard it? Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord is gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind. It shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. We've been seeing that here in America this year. Been some really bad tornadoes, whirlwinds, in other words. Kind of an interesting thing there. The anger of the Lord shall not return until he have executed, until he have performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days ye shall consider it perfectly. In the latter days, you're going to consider the anger of the Lord, and you'll see it. You'll have perfect examples of God's anger. They say that uh, there was a whirlwind not long ago, and they said it was truly biblical in nature. I thought that was rather interesting. It's an act of God. Well, you're right about that. Is it funny that these, uh, you know, meteorologists and whatever else, they come out and they'll say, "I'm an atheist. I'm, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in the Bible." You know. Um, what's the verse say? Who hath stood in the counsel of the Lord and, who, and hath perceived and heard his word? And who hath marked his word and heard it? Nobody really understands. Nobody really knows who God is or whatever. If you say that you have a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ, then you, it's delusions of grandeur. None of us really know what the truth is. You know, the only thing I know is that I know nothing. You know, you hear all that stuff. And what is it? False positivity. It's a, we look very highly upon man, upon education and our best, you know, right now we don't understand this, but in the future we will. Our science will evolve to the point where we'll understand all the mysteries of nature and we'll be able to control weather and everything else. It'll all be just wonderful because we're that brilliant. False positivity is what this whole thing is. But the fact of the matter is God's anger is coming and it's just going to get worse and worse. And you think you've seen big tornadoes right now? There's ones that are coming that are going to be off the charts. Mark my words. There will be earthquakes coming that will be off the charts. No Richter scale is going to be able to read the ones that are coming. The Bible teaches that in the time of Jacob's trouble, yet to be in the future out there, that the, uh, there's going to be an earthquake that's so mighty and so great that it's actually going to flatten the mountains are going to go down. How are you going to read that on your Richter scale? Little, I, we're detecting seismic activity. <laughs> You'll be detecting it. Uh, you're going to consider the anger of the Lord perfectly in the end times. In the last days, the latter days, are like the Bible says, in the latter days ye shall consider it perfectly. Guess what? We're here. Hmm. I have not sent these prophets... Yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. There's a lot of these preachers, these hirelings in the church buildings, and they're saying, good times are coming and your best life now and everything else. Huh. 
But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, like I'm doing to you right now, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. Notice that. When you have a man of God that stands up and preaches, how can you know he's a man of God? Because he'll turn people from their evil ways. It isn't just some kind of a thing of this Gnostic stuff of you believe in your mind, you believe in your heart, whatever else, and you're that's it, you're done, you're in. You can just live like the rest of the lost world. That isn't it at all. A real preacher will turn the people that listen to him, he'll turn them from their sins. A real preacher will rebuke you for sinning. And I get judged on that. Oh, you're being so negative. Yes, that's correct. Because through negativity, through judgment, there's a blessing there. I can turn you from those sins and you'll live a better life. You want your best life now? Okay, then turn from sin. Oh, I don't want to turn. I, 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 I went to another channel and I, I was no longer part of the Denlinger cult. I now listen to other people and my life has improved drastically. Oh, you mean you're getting away with sin? You mean you've seared your, your conscience? I don't want to talk about it because it's just not positive. And yet these people, I've seen them over and over again. Hey, how are things going? Oh, great, great, wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. I mean, you know, okay, you know, one of my relatives just died and, and things and, and uh, I've, uh, I'm having these problems and, you know, I have health issues now and, and uh, we just lost everything that we had and, and um, you know, we're having all these other issues and, and things and, but other than that, it's great. And you just think, okay, you know, a little bit too uh, positive there. Can't handle reality. But let's, uh, let's continue here. Um, verse 23. <clears throat> Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off? Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? saith the Lord, do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord. There's no hiding from God. I have heard what the prophets said. They prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. Kind of like what uh, Martin Luther King Jr. or whatever did. Yeah, I have a dream <laughs> that Catholics and Protestants can get together. That's not a dream from the Lord. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart, which, caused, which thinks it calls my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream, and he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord? Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words, every one from his neighbor. If you don't put this book in its proper position, God's against you. Behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that use their tongues and say, He saith. Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them, and cause my people to err by their lies and by their lightness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore, they shall not profit this people at all, saith the Lord. You know what all this false positivity is? It's not profitable to you. It's continual deception. Oh, hey, the economy is getting better. Now's the time to invest in the stock market. You're going to lose things. Now's the time to get into Bitcoin. It's going down all the time. Now's the time, that's, now's the time to buy real estate and invest in real estate. There's never been a better time to buy a house. They're lying to you. Things are getting better. It's only looking up from here. Uh, no, that's not true. That's not true at all. You're uh, being lied to by people that are telling you that things are getting better. Now let's go to the New Testament, to the book of James. When you get right down to it, there's a reason for false positivity. How are you doing? Great. Oh, good. Yeah, wonderful. Why is that? Because people don't want to get to a point where they're broken. And they say, I need help. I don't know where I'm going when I die. I'm scared. Uh, 
People don't want to get to that point. They're too prideful. Hmm. Pride goeth before destruction and an haughty spirit before a fall. James chapter 4, verse 1. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lusts that war in your members? Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lusts. <laughs> ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. One of the most important verses in the entire Bible. If the world thinks highly of you, God doesn't. <laughs> Just that simple. You need to get to a point where you don't care what the world thinks. You don't care about being popular or whatever else. Verse 5. Do ye think that the Scripture saith in vain, The Spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth, lusteth to envy? But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn. Doesn't sound very positive. And weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Humble yourself. That's not being positive. You know, uh, humbling yourself is negative. Being prideful is positive. Positivity. Well, I'm a good person, I'm, I have a nice vehicle, and I have a good job, and I, I'm this, and I have that, and everything. That's pride. When you humble yourself, you bring yourself down, you get a little bit negative. You start to say, uh, you know, I don't think things are as good as they're telling us on the news. I don't think things are uh, very good right now. Maybe, uh, maybe I should start to think about God. Come out here to a beautiful place like this. There's actually an old pedestal over here, this Bible point area, and there's a King James Bible in it. Praise the Lord for that. Um, there's a, there was a book by Ellen G. White, and that's not going to be staying here. Um, I don't think so. Don't need some devil-possessed woman like her, her writings to mess somebody up, so that'll be going. But um, this is a wonderful place. It'd be nice if uh, judgment of God hit this nation so bad that somebody might come out here Read that King James Bible and take it seriously. But uh, until the false positivity of this nation goes away, I don't see that happening. People just aren't broken enough. Um, so, uh, we're called to be negative, brethren. We're called to look at this world negatively. Look at the Bible positively. It's God's book. Uh, if there's things in it that I don't understand, then it's my fault. It's not the book's fault. I'm not going to change it. Um, I have to be positive about the things of the Lord, but negative towards myself, self-judging, in other words, negative towards this world. That's what you have to be. Um, don't believe in this false positivity stuff. Uh, well, hey, you know, I think that Maybe in the future, if we could get Donald Trump to run again in 2024, we could bring America back and make America great again. You're a fool. Uh, he did some pretty bad stuff to this country. Was not as bad as Joe Biden. And, you know, I can't help some people. You know, They just get into the left-right paradigm and into the whole thing that the, the false prophets bring out and all that stuff from the media. And then they get messed up, can't help them. So just a real quick study here just to kind of, you know, show people the truth on this whole thing. And um, don't fall for the false positivity, okay? So look for a bigger study to be coming out on Sunday morning, premiering here on Born Again Barbarian Channel, and uh, be a real good one. And I'm going to be preached in this spot here, slightly different camera angle, but uh, just a beautiful place here. I'm uh, really enjoying being out here today. And uh, so that's going to be it. Thank you for watching.